Hey everybody, welcome to Trading Capital. It is May 9th here, opening the week. There is continuous blood in the streets on Wall Street. And this is amazing to see that we have now hit the low range of this channel once again. So jumping into the S&P 500 here, you can clearly see that we've been stuck in this parallel channel range for since we've made the top in uh, of January of uh, basically the start of the year. And now every every single time we've hit the low range of this channel, we've had somewhat of a bounce. Now I don't think the bounce is going to be as robust as say this previous bounce, but I do reckon that we potentially get a bounce all the way up to potentially the center point of this trend line, which will be a, a pretty substantial move in many stocks. We have now hit a lot of oversold territories in the stock market, specifically around big cap tech and various other names. <clears throat> Today we went on a massive, massive buying spree. We flipped a few of our shorts and we continue to add to our long positions, just slowly accumulating these beaten down names like Spotify, like Carvana, like Teladoc, like NetNow. And we'll go over those trades later, but we're gonna to stick to the big indices first. So the S&P 500 closed the day down 3.2%. In the after hours, I'm just looking at my other SPY chart, we are getting a little bit of a bounce. So we're, we should be pushing towards that 400 level, which would be roughly the 4000 level on the SPX here. But the fact that we have sold off so much in basically the last couple weeks is pretty extraordinary. But it's not this panic selling, it's just been, the selling I must admit has been this uh, very, um, uh, what's the what's the word I'm looking for? This very controlled and methodical type of selling that we've seen. It's not this dump all out panic as you would usually see with the VIX spiking or the other volatility indexes. Instead, it's just been relentless candle after candle after candle. People think they're buying the dip and it's another sell candle and then another sell candle. So it's very methodical in that approach and I have to admire it as a trader. But the fact of the matter is we filled a key gap on the S&P 500 here. We actually sliced through that technical level and we also are hitting these pivot tops here. And you can see that we had a little bounce at the end of the day and we're currently trading on the SPY around 398.97. So again, pushing for that 400 level. Um, I'm in the camp that we do see a bounce. Your first big resistance level, let's just readjust these now. Your first big resistance level on the S&P 500 is going to be this pivot low here, which will also coincide with this little gap fill that happened back here. So that's going to be your first resistance level. In the event that you get through that, then there's no question in my mind that um, this becomes your next resistance level. I'll just change that to blue so we're consistent. And if you for some reason get through that, then these pivot tops up here are going to be your basically a big, big resistance level alongside with the center point of this channel. Nonetheless, with yields pulling back now, and let's just actually um, flip to the NASDAQ before we touch on yields. The NASDAQ, same kind of thing. We've had this massive, massive sell-off. Let me just draw in the parallel channel so that we can see how clear we've hit support. And if I pull this back, so it touches that pivot high there, this pivot low, we're very, very close to hitting the bottom of that channel. On the NASDAQ, we actually came into these pivot, this pivot low here, and this, this uh, little bit of a bounce support level, and all these pivot tops here. So there's tons of support on the NASDAQ. I do think there is a bounce. One of the reasons I think tech and, and the NASDAQ gets a bounce is, if we flip to the US 10 year, let me just uh, put this correctly. US 10 year, oops. And for some, oh, that's why it's not coming up. Um, there we go. So flipping to the US 10 year, the reason I think tech can get a little bit of bounce is because you've put in this, this topping tail or this, it's not really a topping tail, correct, excuse me, I'm, I stand correct, it's not a topping tail, it's just a reversal candle, but it is a bearish engulfing reversal candle. And the reason it, it's a bearish engulfing candle is because it made a new high compared to the previous close and it also closed lower than the previous open. 
So that's how you get that bearish engulfing candle. You you hit to a T, you hit the 3.2% mark. That was pretty much the exact upside target of the inverse head and shoulders pattern that was down here that we were monitoring. So you hit max upside move pretty much to the penny. And now I do think it's time for yields to consolidate a bit before heading higher, which ultimately should give the indexes maybe for a week or two, just depending on how long the consolidation period is and depending on how much how high inflation comes in. I think with economic data coming out this week, Wednesday, we have the new inflation number. If inflation is lower and comes in with consensus around the 8.1 percent mark, then that could show that inflation is decreasing, which I think would overall support yields pulling back and consolidating. If for some reason inflation comes in higher, then I can expect um, yields won't go as deep into a consolidation as we might think. So with yields pulling back, I do think the overall indices get a stock market. Just jumping back to the S&P 500, um, the spiders, let me go intraday on the SPY so you can see the after hours action. My chart is just very messy because I have a, a lot of day trade lines and different uh, things that I look at throughout the intraday basis. But you can see here, spiders, a, a, a massive bounce off of the lows. You did put in this 10 minute bottoming or um, a bottoming tail and you're, now you're seeing some, some substantial follow through. It is a good sign that you have a substantial amount of volume. Since on this last candle, you've pretty much negated all of the previous intraday volume spikes in one fell swoop. It stands to suggest that since you've negated all of the volume intraday volume bars, I do think we come up to fill this gap at the very least around the 410 mark. That is going to give a tremendous lift to all of our long positions and uh, that should coincide with yields uh, taking a breather and pulling back. So it's good to see the spiders are catching a bid because we are starting to accumulate our long positions and it would be beautiful to see, you know, with all the buying spree that we went on today, along with crypto, along with other variety of stocks, it'll be wonderful to see if that bounce is a follow, if this bounce uh, gets some follow through. I think the big winner on the day we're all happy to see is natural gas. Um, natural gas closed the day down to over 10.88%. It's catching a small little bid here in um, in the uh, after hours, but nonetheless, tremendous, tremendous price action. For those of you that were shorting it with us, it's awesome to see. Uh, I actually scored in the last two days. I did a massive day trade up here and basically netted myself over 20% on my day trade. And let's just say my day trades are a lot bigger than my swing trades, so I'm ecstatic uh, the price action we were we we drew this channel in last night, and before the markets, when we were analyzing the futures market, we had this channel in place, and we said you're most likely going to come up to test the top of this channel, and the reason being is because you have your pivot high, this is your breakdown zone, your pivot low, you came back up to test, got rejected, tried coming up through on light volume, again you got rejected, and you had this massive sell off, huge bounce off the low range of the channel did not negate and take out the high, so that meant further downside was ahead. And the selling was just beautiful. Really, really beautiful to see. Um, I'm still holding on to my KOLD. I did close, cover my UNG short, which again, I netted an amazing 20% uh, on my day trade. So congrats to those of you who also took the signals for natural gas in previous videos. Um, if we're looking at KOLD, which I'm still holding, um, I'm looking for a move of KOLD going all the way to this 1258 level. And if we happen to look at UNG, that would probably coincide somewhere around um, this $20.12 level. There, if we flip to the daily chart, um, there is a massive, massive technical gap down here around the 2010 level, 2012 level. It, it's just under the 786 Fib level, so I do think you eventually get there. Now, the question is, after two hard days of selling and pretty much 25% from the highs, um, do we get a bounce? There is a key gap here that you could likely fill for the UNG. Um, I do think you get some follow through downside tomorrow, potentially coming to hit this support zone where you initially bounced off of. So it'll just be interesting to see 
how it all shapes up. But I'm just going to flip to the actual natural gas chart. And um, so we can just analyze the actual proper uh, natural gas chart. I always find this one more accurate. Um, but this is the daily chart. You can see here, this is the support line I was watching. Pivot low to pivot low to pivot low. You've actually closed below that. So tomorrow is your confirmation day. If you confirm below this level of support, there's not much more downside until you hit this level of support. And that's why I think you, you could potentially get a small bounce off of that. But ultimately, I do think that support level cracks in due time. You just have to be a little bit patient. If that support level cracks, there's a big level I'm watching over here. Let me just uh, line it up on my chart. Um, okay, I will put in a trend line so it's easy for all of us to see. This is a big level for natural gas that I'm watching. If for some reason we um, crack this level, which I do think will happen, then the 546 level, 543 level, 540 area, that's going to be a massive, massive level for natural gas. Um, there is potentially a tradable bounce to occur on the long side. I'm not looking to go long yet, but I'm certainly not shy to go long natural gas once we've covered our short positions and sold out of KOLD. K -O -L -D. So it's pretty incredible to see this price action. I think we're going to continue to get the volatility. However, I do think the markets are in for some short-term reprieve. We have had massive, massive selling on the back of rising yields, uh, inflation talk, Federal Reserve taper process. I think the, the markets have kind of um, panicked and always they, they always throw the baby out with the bathwater. They price in the worst case scenario. And I think there's a lot of quality names now that are worth accumulating, at least for a more intermediate swing trade. Maybe we don't haven't seen the lows in the market, but I certainly think we're due for some sort of technical bounce. And when the bounce occurs, mark my words, it is going to be ferocious. When you have stocks down 80, 85, 90% from the highs, and some of them are still quality companies, you will just better hold on to your hats. That's all I can say. Um, I think that about sums it up for the main indices and natural gas. We will touch base on crypto in the next video, so stay tuned for that. But hopefully everyone was able to bank some profits today on the trades that we covered, also accumulate some of the long positions. The beautiful thing is that um, if some of you have seen the alerts late for the trades that I issued, you could actually get in a better price than I can. So. I personally think I'm in at great levels and I have no qualms about the levels that I'm holding at, but there's certain uh, stocks that you can actually get in better levels than I can. So take that and use that to your advantage.